Miracy. Hi, I'm Larissa Banting, and you're listening to Making It. I run a publicity agency called LBPR, and we help entrepreneurs make headlines for all the right reasons. When I was little, I always wanted to be a dancer. And so I did my first solo when I was like four years old because my mom was a dance teacher. And of course, and I enrolled in ballet and then eventually jazz, tap, you know, the whole nine yards, went to university, actually studied dance, and I did become a professional dancer. Entrepreneurship was definitely not on the cards, although my father was an entrepreneur. My father was a, he was a, well, what a character my dad was. He did everything. He was like the reeve of a township. He was a pilot in World War II. He had a nursery business. He you know, pretty much had done it all. And he was producer of the largest multicultural festival in Canada. And I ran four days. They had like 100,000 people. All the different ethnic groups would come together and have a, a tent in this giant park. And they'd have their, their food and their, their dancing and their music and everything. So I watched that journey, like what it took. And my father did everything from, you know, the PR to the marketing to making the the ads for the newspapers. So that was very much instilled in me. But I wanted to have the typical nine to five journey. So when I when I retired from dancing, I got into marketing and public relations. But I did have my own little biz on the side. My girlfriend and I, we put our two heads together and came up with a publicity company for film and television. So that was really my first foray into owning my own business. And so what happened was eventually I was just, you know what, I, I can't work for the city anymore. It's an amazing job. I mean, like that's one of those jobs you're in it for life, right? But I just was like, man, I have, I have bigger horizons. So I went all in on a film and television publicity, and I was working on a, a movie we were shooting on the Caribbean coast of Costa Rica. And that was in... November, December of, of 2001. And I met this really cute actor <laughs> and decided to leave everything behind in Canada. And I moved down to Costa Rica in uh, January of 2002. Didn't speak any Spanish. Didn't know anybody other than my husband, well, who eventually became my husband and didn't have a job. Back in like 2002, we were still using fax machines. You know, we were we were dial up internet. You couldn't be a digital nomad because there was no digital to be nomading. And so when I moved to Costa Rica, all of a sudden I couldn't do my job because my job was working with publicity people who were in Canada. That was my silo, film and television and the arts. Here I'm in Costa Rica. I don't know the landscape. I don't speak the language. And I had to pivot. So I pivoted and I was working for a travel agency and they needed a wedding planner. And I was like, well, I just planned my own wedding on the beach here. And through my work as a marketing and PR person, I did massive events. They said, okay, great. Put together your, your business proposal. And I did. And I became the wedding planner. And then that morphed to the point where I had to give up doing the travel because I, I couldn't balance both. And that's how I started my business. One of the first destination wedding planning firms in Latin America. In my fourth year of business, we hit our first seven-figure year. So I just sold the business a couple of months ago, which I'm quite excited about. Looking back on it now, I realize how my formative years really served me in helping me create that, that foundation for a successful business. You know, just the fact that I chose to name it Weddings Costa Rica instead of Weddings by Larissa. Because in the back of my mind, I was thinking long term, okay, eventually you are going to want an out. So no one's going to buy a business if it's named after myself. So that's why, you know, right from that moment when I first, you know, signed the paperwork for what am I naming this company, I was already thinking to, to the future. So yeah, that's one thing I would say for anyone who's getting into creating a business, think about the long term. What's the long game? Am I going to sell? Am I going to like, how am I, what's my exit plan? I mean, I know that most businesses do not make it to 10 years, unfortunately, but you still want to be thinking that, lo that long term. You know, I look back on some of my early years and I'm just like, holy canoodles, how do we, how do we pull some of this stuff off? Because, you know, we just didn't have the infrastructure 
there weren't the options, you know, you're literally in the middle of a jungle and you can't just call up the rental shop and say, Hey, the couple forgot to count themselves in for the chair and the plates and all of that good stuff, because the rental shop is a six hour drive away. So it definitely taught me how to always have a plan B and C because you just never know what is going to be thrown at you. And also being able to work under pressure with grace because in entrepreneurship, there's not a handbook. I would say that the, the biggest learning I've ever had from a mistake of mine was buying into my own mindset that I'm a creative. I don't understand how to, all the financial part of the business works. I'm going to leave that to the people who do. And I learned in a very heavy way that no, nobody knows the business like you. Nobody should be in charge of the finances without you being the ultimate person in charge. Because unfortunately, the, the, the person who was in charge of my finances just decided to help themselves to the honeypot. And so that was a, a very brutal like mistake because it, it almost almost collapsed my company. I'm just being totally honest here. So that mistake has made me realize, no, I need to be the person who is on top of the finances. I need to know where things are going. I need to understand how to do a P&L statement. Like if I were to go back in time and tell my younger self, here's the number one thing that you need to know about doing business above all else is be in charge of your own finances. It's funny because my aunt always has said to me like, Larissa, you're like a cat. You always land on your feet. I don't know. I just dig deep because what option do I have? I can't just throw up my hands and go, oh, well, woe is me. This didn't work out because I planned for everybody else's plan B, but I didn't have my own plan B. Okay. Sit with it. Feel it. Okay. Now get to work. How do you dig yourself out of this hole? And that's always been how I've approached everything. Being an entrepreneur is like walking a tightrope that has been slicked with olive oil and there's no net below you at times because you're up there on your own, right? There, there's, there's no safety net. There's no one who's going to be able to sweep in and save you if you slip. That's the downside of entrepreneurship. And I think that's why so many people get stars in their eyes and, oh my gosh, I'm going to create my own business. And then when push comes to shove. Oh my gosh, these clients are late on paying their invoices and you know that's affected our cash flow. Like those are the very real scary things about entrepreneurship that people don't talk about because they're not sexy. You know, everybody wants to sell the dream, but nobody wants to talk about the nightmare. Even the most most, most successful companies in the world have those dark periods where everything falls apart, it seems like, right? And you have to make some really uncomfortable decisions about how you're going to keep that boat afloat. You know, like it, everything has a cycle. And if anyone tells you they've been in business for 20 years and they've never had a dip, then either they're coming from, you know, they're either not telling the, the truth or they have a very large inheritance backing them up. <laughs> That's the reality. Making it to me is is freedom. To me, having the freedom, especially now that I, I, you know, I'm a mom, and my daughter, you know, is 15. She's a competitive horse jumper. So, oh, she's going to be competing in Guatemala uh, next month. I'm going to be taking the week off to go with her. To me, that's making it because I've created this business that allows me to work from wherever I need to. I, I did sell the wedding planning business because I did not have the location freedom. So with my public relations agency, going back to my, my first love, you know, I've been doing PR since 1993, that gives me that freedom. So to me, that that's making it. I've gotten to this point in my career where I can work at the hours that I need to and be able to work where I need to. And also, you know, obviously have the finances to support the lifestyle that I want for my family. I don't need to be driving a Lamborghini or have the beach house. That may be somebody else's version of making it. But for me, just being able to do what I want when I need to, whenever I want to, is making it.
I'm Larissa Banting, and you've been listening to Making It. You can find me at www.larissabanting.com. I am the only Larissa Banting in the world. And if you would like to get started on your own publicity journey, be sure to check out the show notes where you can pick up your very own copy of 365 Days to Power Up Your Publicity, the only PR calendar you'll ever need to make headlines for all the right reasons for your own business. Making It is part of the Miracy FM podcast network, which also includes such shows as Just Between Coaches and Once Upon a Business. To catch the great episodes that are coming up on Making It, please follow us on YouTube or your favorite podcast player. And if you enjoyed the show, please leave us a comment or a starred review. It's the best way to help us get these ideas to more people. Thank you, and we'll see you next time.